Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to From the Depths. If you're looking at the submarine right now, um, she looks quite a bit different than what you might have seen in the previous episode. Uh, basically, she got fat. And that's because I've added a second layer of armor, and then another one. This is the original interior of the submarine, what you're looking at right here. But, because I have been... Well, in the previous episode, I was taking a, a good bit of damage... I have decided to add a few more armor layers. This is how it goes. We have one armor layer, uh, and well, it's not really a great example because you're not looking at the, uh, you're looking at exactly the middle line of the ship, the center line. I have one layer of uh, alloy. That's the interior layer of the hull. Let me turn the light on. The interior layer of the hull is alloy. That's uh, the layer here. That's the base layer. Then we have a layer of metal, but in a 90 degree uh, changed, or a 90 degree uh, directional change as opposed to the rest. So that way I'm building a uh, an armor lattice of sorts. That is going to boost my survivability. This one is a bit different because it is the center line of the ship and I couldn't quite get it lined up as much as I would like. And then on the outside we have a layer of rubber which is going to reduce the sonar profile of the sub, which will also boost its survivability, although not directly in a way of armor. This is gonna make the sub less detectable. From the sides, I have a, uh, and you can click middle mouse button and go to sonar detection range when you're in the build menu. I have a detection range of 962 meters. Before I started this operation, that was about double. Uh, actually, no, it was more. It was about two and a half thousand. So, rubbering or rubber coating the submarine means that it has uh, decreased substantially. Also, on the outside here, I have added a blister, which is uh, rubber, then empty, and then metal. And of course, after the metal, uh, we have another layer of alloy. And for the parts where I couldn't quite get it as much as I would like, on the, the parts where the submarine is slanted here. I put the second layer of metal on the inside. So over here we have uh, rubber, alloy, then metal. This should significantly boost my survivability. And hopefully I won't have to test it because at the same time the stealthiness of the submarine has increased. Also added a few more torpedo launchers. We used to have two on the bow and now we have six. I want to make uh, torpedoes the main weapon against most surface combatants. And these things, in case you have forgotten, 48 meters per second times 80 seconds, so let's say about a range of 3,800 to uh, 4,000 meters, which should be substantial enough to take out anything that gets too close. This local weapon controller does know about it. It's, let's say, allowed to go to 3,500, and, a half thousand, and um, I can turn mainframe one back on so that it starts automatically engaging targets as it sees it, which immediately it does and it immediately starts engaging something to the front, which is a coyote. Uh, that coyote is about to have a really bad time. I think it's actually trying to shoot back. Yeah, it seems to be shooting back with a couple of either missiles or torpedoes, but I think they're missiles. And, well, not really substantially useful. There we go. Uh, was that a kill shot? Or not? Mm, yeah, that was a kill shot. Target eliminated. Now, it has been suggested that I take the Red October and put her on cruise mode, in patrol mode. That works, yes, but um, the AI then immediately decides that it's a great idea to go to full speed. And by doing that, it burns a hell of a lot of power. It burns a hell of a lot of steam. That's not something I particularly like. So overall, I much prefer to keep manual control of the submarine. Let's see if the boilers are acting as intended. Yeah, burn rate, nothing. I'm just relying on the RTGs right now, making sure that these things provide the power. And if I really need to burn a lot, then I can do the steam boilers, if I really need to go fast. Now, um, Back in the previous episode, I set up both the system of the buoys over here and the uh, accompanying anti-air launchers over here. These launch the canisters. 
the system works. The system simply works. But um, what I forgot to do during that episode was release control of the missiles. And that's why they were not tracking through the AI. So what I was doing wrong was uh, the remote guidance on these things. Or actually not on those, but on these. The... Hold on. Active Radar Seeker. No, 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 no. You're supposed to have remote guidance. Apply that to everything. There we go. Um, this is now going to be using <coughs> remote guidance by the AI. And thereby it will work. As long as I don't have manual control over it. Now what was also suggested is that I uh, use these in a slightly different capacity. I can either have them constantly attached to the sub, like harpoons. Uh, I did that with the Glorious series, in case you remember. But the alternative, and I'm thinking of going with that, is going with a launcher that launches a really slow missile that just shoots up to the surface, just straight up, and transmits anything down to the submarine. By doing that, it's going to allow me to constantly get eyes on the... Well, eyes on the sky, literally. Eyes on the horizon, or above the horizon. And that way, I will have a target seeker, or a... I should put that, a detection system that can work with my uh, surface air missiles. So these things, uh, a, sh a variable thruster, a fuel tank, uh, that's over here, fuel tank, variable thruster, output, none. Default direction, straight ahead, we're going to go with ballast tank, making sure that the buoyancy is maximized, and then a radar buoy, that's all. These things have a lifetime of only 20 seconds, thrust duration is 80 seconds, so yeah, they could be elongated slightly. But by the time that I fire, uh, I will have already moved on. And I'm moving at about 8 meters per second currently. So I'm not sure if that's in my best interest. Um, at any rate, I do want these things to fire every once in a while. So I'm going to set up the control block, the ACB. And this ACB, whoops, like that. This ACB is going to affect a weapon right next to it. 2 meter block. <clears throat> One block controlled, yes. Condition, there is an enemy enemy unit within a range of 3,000. Yeah, that's fine. Because these things are mostly there to guide the uh, remote guided missiles, those small missiles from the missile canister. So when this happens, if there is an enemy within 3,000 meters, then I want you to fire one of these weapon systems. Um, and I want this to trigger... Uh, slave condition. Minimal intervation, activation interval, 5 seconds. So it's going to throw out one of these buoys every couple seconds. Only if there is a threat that is that close. And currently, there is not. I managed to slightly bypass the position where I need to be. Where are there more enemies, if any? Mm, not a whole lot going on. I'm considering just going through a gate to encounter some more difficult stuff. Because I feel that the Red October, uh, sure enough, she doesn't have VLS yet. She does not yet have capacity to sink large units quickly. But with torpedoes and surface to air missiles, she can get by easily. She can get by against more difficult threats. So, time to go through a gate. A little while later, we're fighting this... I don't know, contraption. Uh, this flying unit showed up when I was editing my ship and building a new missile system. Uh, it looks intimidating, but it's not quite capable of doing any kind of damage to me because I'm too deep for it. So uh, the Red October is perfectly fine, although it does not lack an effort, as you can see by the shells that are coming down. The new weapon system that I've created is sitting deeper into the hull right here. I'm uh, planning on building a potential periscope over here in the conning tower. So this weapon system is now currently not in use. And the one that is, is back here. Uh, it's not its final form yet, I was just experimenting. What we have over here is two medium missiles, which carry explosive warheads. A couple of canisters of small warheads, or small missiles, which also carry warheads. 
these are all under remote guidance and they get brought up to the alt well, to, to surface level i should say using these things two large missiles and so far it seems to work because what happens is that uh, every once in a while these things get expelled they slowly but steadily make it to the surface and over here you can see some of the radar buoys that are traveling to the surface and once they make it to the surface, they go, aha, and now we can attack. So what happens here is that we have four of the medium missiles and a whole package of small missiles, including signal processors, in case these guys get distracted by something. And they all go on the offensive with various different speeds, making it even more difficult to get intercepted. And they start inflicting all sorts of damage. And in this case, that is bad news for the guy because it's on the surface and when you get to the surface my torpedoes start to track you and when that happens well it won't be long for this guy to actually start dying let's see if the torpedoes have been fired yep there go the torps target has been detected in the water and the torpedoes are eager to make a kill there it is you guys wanted more combat? Well, some of you do. Here it is. And this is exactly how I wanted my uh, anti-air missiles to work. Cripple the flying unit, and then the torpedoes will do the rest. Because this thing is basically done. It's just going to take me a few more torpedoes to get the kill on it. Um, capturing it... Tempting. Uh, risk reward, however, is not quite there for me, which means that if I do capture it, uh, great, but my risk of getting my character killed and thus basically ending the whole series very early is not worth it. So I'm just going to kill it off and pick up whatever it happens to drop for me, uh, which could be a decent amount. And as it's listing over more and more and more, it might go out of control soon, or we might end up killing its AI. Also, some of the smaller missiles are still impacting. Not terribly lethal, but this... Uh, what was it? Piraiba is down to 81% already. And soon, right about now, there's another salvo of torpedoes in the water. Now, with that thing being killed off, albeit slowly, uh, it's time to set up something new over here in the conning tower. I don't need these missiles anymore. And I don't need these small launchers anymore. There. Uh, first things first, I need to make sure there's no water leaking from the conning tower into any of the other parts of the ship. So let's seal it up. Actually, I have some room down here. I can use that. I can use that quite nicely in fact because what I could do is make a a pit of some sort a pit where I can keep all of my uh, periscope equipment and the longer it is and I'm planning to work with pistons the better it will work so let's open up the tower a bit more and I will close this thing up and uh, use as little room as I can. Let's say that this heavy armor is the minimum. And I'm just going to go with a bit of heavy armor because I have quite a few resources here. Turn that round. In a way, I'm building a sort of a missile silo here, except it's not going to be holding missiles. 3 meter beam. Yeah, that should do it. I will at some point have to go and turn around to pick up whatever the, the Karaibo or Piraiba, whatever. That flying contraption is going to drop behind. It's going to leave behind. Uh, it would be a waste not to pick that up. Because while it is great to have uh, standoff weapons like these, they tend to run somewhat expensive. 
because, uh, well, missiles, they're not cheap. But I am happily paying the price for what they do. And yes, I know that some people have suggested that I build a particle cannon, a pack, but I don't have, uh, or I have not quite gone through the tutorial enough to be able to do that. Not yet. So that might come in a future episode. For now, missiles and torpedoes. Let's close this tower up. Close this thing up. I'm working with quite a bit of rubber here to ensure that uh, a sonar return from the top down is not going to cause all sorts of mayhem. Oh, to make sure that, that is actually true. I can just go with a few more rubber blocks here. So that was a four meter, yeah, four meter beam. This is going to have to be a three. And then a Another three here, and a one. And down here we also have a layer. Okay. Um, does that seal it? I think it does. Good. Piston time. Telescopic piston. Uh, yeah, these. Can extend several times their own length. That's exactly what I need. I want you looking in that direction. And you're going to sit more or less in the middle of that pit. I want to have another piston on top of that. Uh, that was not quite looking in the right direction, I think. Well, I'm not sure if it's important in this case. Uh, yeah, look towards the bow of the boat. That's one piston, that's the next piston. And I think I need one more. Down that way. Hold on, can I fit even one more? Yes. That's the exact same height as the rest of the tower. Excellent. Although, no, shit. Um, yeah, yeah. What I want on here is a radar block to make sure that if I extend it above the water, I can see stuff. That would be lovely. Let's see, this is the, this is the highest piston. Good. Or is it? Can we just extend all the pistons? Here, this is the top piston. Okay, over here I want a detector, a 360 radar, which of course underwater won't do anything. But then again, I don't plan on spending a lot of time on the surface, so it shouldn't be an issue at all. Lightweight block, each side, and then a couple of material gatherers. Put a few of those on either side so I can just have those extend when I am in a resource zone. Now, I imagine that extending all these pistons is going to lead to a massive massive scope there should be a way to do all of the extensions in one button i just don't exactly know how to <laughs> all right if i'm not mistaken these things can extend to 12 meters 12 meters i have uh one at the bottom two three four five one two three four so I can extend to 48 meters. That means that the submarine can stay pretty damn deep down and I won't have to worry about it at all. Um, let's see. I think it's easiest here, although I haven't tried this yet. If I have an ACB, and this ACB is um, <clears throat> only gonna function when I tell it to. Control, no. Uh, I needed to work with pistons. This is the stats. This is the al uh, attitude of the vehicle. Mm. Can I tell the piston to listen to any particular command? Where are you? Here. Piston. Um... 
Rotational movement, no. Drive factors, no. Advanced controller options. Okay. Uh, green is positive, red is negative. But I do need an advanced controller first. I just don't know if that's going to impact the way that I control the boat. So if it does, then it's not quite the right way to go about it. That's why I ideally would have just a button that says extend or retract. Let's see. I need to build an advanced controller. Uh... What? Am I missing it? Connect two remote vehicle controls. Take no, I don't need that. Wireless remote. I thought that the advanced control, or the complex controller. Yeah, that's it. The thing is, does this work? Or am I not close enough to it? Yeah, there we go. So I need to be close to it in order for this thing to fully be able to retract. But I think I don't have... This one is not listening. You, pay attention. No, it is. This one is not listening. Up, down. If I did this thing correctly, it should fully fit inside the conning tower. Hopefully without causing issues. Yes, look at that. <laughs> exactly as I wanted. Uh, now it's going to say, oh no, it's it's disabled. Yeah, but now it's fine. Pretty much. Cannot look backwards. Oh, you're looking at the rudder. Yeah, that's fine. So, that is the periscope. I just need to maintain my seat. Otherwise, I won't be able to use it. Did we kill whatever was behind us? Yep, 13,000 materials. Okay, let's turn around and go and get them. As I'm traveling to this particular objective, I'm thinking, you know what, this is actually taking a while. I think I might need to build a small submarine to try and help me. Because that way I don't have to bring the whole Red October over. So what I'm going to do is set up a small docking area. It's going to be a uh, home, home, house, whatever. It's going to be <laughs> the living quarters, if you will, to a small submarine. The submarine will not be armed. It's not going to be doing any kind of combat duty. It's just there to scoot over, pick up resources, and go back. That's all that it needs to do. So, time to build a new vehicle. Uh, ideally in that direction, and it's immediately going to get dragged away. Hold. Because I was under power, and thereby moving forward. Where is the tractor beam? Here. You. Selection. Shit. Didn't find it. Oh, actually, it's not terrible, because the thing didn't actually get created. Probably because I stopped construction on it. Okay, now I'm holding steady. Uh, let's give it a few blocks. There. And then go all the way back. Air pump. Tractor beam. New vehicle. Hold distance, about 25, that's fine. And activate. Uh, it's at an azimuth, so it's holding it up. I want it to be at an angle. No. No. Elevation? Really? Is that it? Yeah. Elevation, 90 degrees. There. Okay, now I'm going to be building on top of that new vehicle. So, here. And build on this force. That's your front. You're kind of being dragged along. Which is fine. What do I need? Uh, not much. I need a couple of containers so that I can bring the resources. Uh, maybe one large cargo container is sufficient, but it does make it really bulky. These things are better. So, mirror mode it. 
What color did I pick for that? Let's see, how much can you house? 8,000, that's not a whole lot. Let's go for more. 16,000, 24. 32,000, I think that's sufficient for now. Because we can always use it as a sort of a go-between. All right, then um, a couple of slopes. I will need to make it slightly bigger here because I want an RTG on it. Resources, uh, you're going to get one RTG. Um, oh crap, it's going to need a ballast tank if I want to keep it at a certain depth. That's unfortunate. Because I was not quite planning on that. Unless, unless it's not a submarine but a small surface craft. Ah, in which case it would also need some sort of submersible or some sort of buoyancy. Great. All right, so as it happens with these things, they uh, generally become a little bigger than I would want. Let's see. If I want some sort of buoyancy, I'm going to have to make it even longer. I just hope that the AI knows how to work this thing, knows how to control it. That might not be easy. I'm definitely not very handy when it comes to programming AIs in this game. So the back area here is... Actually, I need a little more. Uh, is where the AI is going to live, and also the area that's going to be capable of uh, hopefully producing some buoyancy. Hopefully. The real question is, what speed is the thing going to travel at? And that probably won't be terribly impressive. But we'll see. Experimenting, as always. Okay. So, we have our RTG. Now to throw on a battery pack, uh, an AI, I need a mainframe, I don't think I need much for this thing. I need a mainframe, but not there, because over there I cannot add a card connector, a card slot, um, plug and play. Hovercraft, circling ship. No, you're you're none of these things. Behavioral and maneuver subroutines. Whoops. Routine. Um, tell the troubleshooter what your vehicle can do, and it will flag potential problems. It can strafe. No, 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 no. It cannot do any of these things. It control the altitude. Yes. It just doesn't know it yet. Maneuver. Oh, right. That's the thing I was just trying to avoid. I need to teach that this thing is a submersible. So water it is mode at your service. a water mode. I need to build on it a bit more. At this point, I really need those resources that I was about to pick up manually because I can uh, waste a lot of resources on this thing. A little bit. Okay, mirror mode it. Couple of slopes here. Ah, not like that. And then a couple of triangle corners here. Finally, propulsion is going to be provided in the form of a simple, probably just two crank motors in that direction. Actually, no one should be sufficient. It's a really small craft. So one of those, a sealed shaft, followed by a one meter propeller. Then we're going to finish it up. Two meter beams. 
shit. I forgot that you need to do that first. Uh, yeah. Metal axis, steam engine, small crank, there, two meter sealed shaft, which is kind of sticking out the back, prop, done. Now, a couple of roll props and other stuff that's going to keep it more stable can just be small ones. Propeller circular. These are your roller presets. These are your pitching presets. And I know that they can do both, but I haven't really had a much or a high success rate with that, so I'm not going to use that. Okay, resources, no control, PIDs. I need two. This one is going to go into the uh, pitch. And it's going to use the propulsion pitch for that. This one is going to do the propulsion roll, working with the roll signal. And then we have one that works with the depth. Uh, altitude above mean sea level, working with the air pump. And I want a set value of uh, minus 200. That's where I want it to stay. And then finally, an air pump. Oops. Didn't mean to cancel the build. Got room here? Yes. Air pump. Pump is off. Very good. Now, if I did everything correctly here, it should work. The only thing missing is a way to transform all of that power into something useful in the form of an electric motor. Electric engine. There. Okay. Uh, pitch and roll are trying to fight me at the moment. That's fine. Oh, I missed a spot. Slope. There. Okay, now let's see what happens if I detach it. Okay, buddy, uh, listen up. I want you to move. Oh, I didn't give it maneuver control yet. Maneuver, add maneuver. No, I don't need to add a maneuver. Um, add shipper tank. There. Wonder distance, I don't care. Ideal pitch, none. Should be fine, I think. I hope. Airborne at your service. No. Airborne at your service. Don't be an aircraft. You're Water not. Water mode at your service. All right, sunshine. How are you doing? What are you up to? The hell? Where's my little craft? Are you trying to? What's your altitude? You're surfaced? No, you're not surfaced. Where are you? Are you diving? It might not have enough buoyancy. I think all of that metal cannot fight the amount of... Or the... Um, all that metal is making it too heavy. So it's having difficulty staying at the level that I told it to. There we go. Now it's doing a little better. Okay, I have an objective for you. I need you to go and pick up the resources. There. You're in control. Moving now. What's your speed? 12 meters per second. Not bad. For something cheap that I just threw together. Depth, 200 meters. It's... <laughs> 
I think it's constantly trying to compensate here. So it's constantly trying to overcompensate the roll. That is something I can probably fix. Is I've set the gain to 0 0.05. It shouldn't be responding as heavily. Okay, I think it seems to be working. Craft's moving. It's gonna pick up the resources. It gives me time to pick up something else. Oh, speaking of, we have an allegiance there. Uh, I need this new vehicle to barely hold any resources. And I need the Red October to hold all of them. That allegiance is surface craft by any chance. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's one of those attack boats. Right. Well, um, I'm going to leave it here and we'll take down this little attack boat in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what your thoughts are on both the scope, the new design of the sub, and my little attack boat, or my little uh, <laughs> resource gatherer, which has already picked up the resources. No, has it? No, it was keeping resources, I think. I still have 34,000. I'm fine. Um, let me know what your thoughts are and I'll see you soon for the next episode.